So here's how this happened. Um, I'm like, hey, okay. So I want to, I want to be like really short in the back and on the top and on the sides, but give me a little bit in the front, you know, just a little bit in the front so I can play with it a little bit. So I have something to do, you know? And she's like, okay. And so it was like, in retrospect, here's, here's what, how it probably went down because I'm still sick. (laughs) I got <laughs> short and the size in the top, you know, <laughs> and the play with the front. <laughs> got it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, welcome, friends. Last guy, fan. It's time for vlog. Okay, so uh, first up, still sick, so can't do Phoenix. I can't finish Phoenix, and it's frustrating. I can't do podcast because I'm still sick. Because I can't cough during the podcast. That would be really annoying. I can't do collabs because I'm, I'm ruining everyone's audio if I'm just coughing through the thing. So it kind of sucks. There's things you can't do when you're sick. Like, I can't, I can't have a coughing fit during things. And also, I can't make my throat worse while I'm sick because then it'll, you know, get worse. Because uh, when I do voice stuff, it, it shreds. It shreds a little bit. So it sucks. It definitely sucks. A haircut? Ah. Um, for now, I'm going to be extremely cold. Uh huh. I I wanted something in the front to play with. I got nothing. Like, here's Scarf's dream haircut someday. And that is the pompadour. That is the dream. So, basically, clean slate. Clean slate. Um, it's all gone. It's all gonna grow out. And since I'm gonna have a job... Oh, by the way, I have a job. Um, I'll get into that in a second. Uh, pompadour is what I want. So, as it grows out, I'll go to a place that can help me understand how to grow it out and trim it and maintain it everything as it's growing. That is the plan. Now, I might get lazy and never do it, but if I don't get lazy, I would love to have the pump. I, I just, I like that hairstyle for reasons I cannot explain. I just really like that hairstyle. I would like it, so I'm going to try to do it, and we'll see if I actually do it. Other news, I start Monday. I start Monday. Monday. I thought we were, I wasn't going to work until November, but they're like, no, nah, you're good. You can work now. I was like, okay, well then, get some working now, you know? Uh, I work Monday. I work Monday. So here's here's the things going on. There's some anxiety about that. Because it's like, well, shoot, now I can't work on the channel as much. I can only do a little bit at a time. I've already mentioned many times what the schedule will be, uh, ideally. And now it's just, you know, I'm about to have this job. It's about to be, I'm going to have this job. I'm not going to have as much time for the channel. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. We're not going to stop doing the channel. We're never going to stop. This is something that's very important to me and Jinx. We're always going to work on We're always going to do it. But it's going to be push come to shove a little bit. Like, it's going to be, there's going to be some crunch time going on here. And it's going to be interesting to see how we adapt, but we will adapt. That's very important. Uh, other things. So, so Scarf's back in League of Legends. I haven't played MOBAs much besides Blizzard. Uh, Hots, because I just really like Hots. Gigantic is fun as well, but I don't really consider it a MOBA. At least not in a traditional sense. And so Scarf's going back to League of Legends. Why? Because Scarf met a bunch of girls who play League of Legends. It's that simple. It's it's that simple. That's it's that simple. <laughs> that's that's how it happens. That's how it happens. Uh, so Scarf's looking at League of Legends again. By the way, York got changed. Okay, those of you who play League of Legends, York got changed. He was my boy, and now he's changed. And apparently, he's really strong. So fine, but. I liked his weird playstyle, but okay, he's different. They changed Poppy a little bit? Like, her alt's different? I love that old alt. Like, that alt is, I really hate this person, I'm gonna kill this person. Or, I'm about to get 5 ganked, I'm going to now alt on Soraka and get the fudge out. Like, that is what the Poppy alt was. Like, you could be unkillable, it was amazing, and now apparently she changed. I haven't played yet. Apparently Triss is the same, she just looks different. Like, Tristana is my girl. She's my favorite. Like, I'm a Yordle player. I play Trist, I play Poppy, I play Lulu. I, d- I didn't even check if Lulu got changed. I assume she didn't. Is why. Um, I play everyone but Teemo. I, everyone hates Teemo. I, I agree with the hatred of Teemo. <laughs> uh, I can't remember some of the other Yordles. Um, Heimer. Heimer's so annoying, but I like playing him. Uh, I also hate fighting him. Uh, the dude with the plane, don't remember his name. There's gotta be new Yordles. I hope there's new Yordles. Uh, there has to be new Yordles. 
Why is there not a, a Yordle skin for every hero in that game? There should be. Because why not? Um... I can't remember some of the other Yordles. Like, Yordles are my jam. The Yordle with infinite magical power, the infinite AP, whatever his name is, the one where uh, the more minions he kills, the stronger he gets. It starts with an X, I think. Or, no, Vager. Vager. Vager's my boy. Um... Is Amumu still OP? I don't know. I because I, I I looked at a couple of my I looked at my favorites. I sh I didn't look at Darius though, or is it or is it the other one? The one with the axe, not the one with the the one who has no facial hair out of the two brothers. Is it Darius or Draven? No, Draven is. The, oh my, God, I'm talking about League of Legends. Draven's the one with the two blades, and Darius is of the axe. Darius is my boy. Morgana's my girl. I don't know if what Morgana is now. I, I know Morgana is always buff nerf, buff nerf, buff nerf. I wonder what she is now. I don't know. But uh, I hope she's still awesome. I don't know. Uh, but she's great. And anything else I don't remember. I don't remember at all. I know Ari because everyone loves Ari. I remember her. I don't know. I just downloaded it because of girls. That's that's it. Random thing. Uh, me and Jinx have been co-oping Divinity Original Sin 2, because we both like Divinity Original Sin, and it's really fun. And here's what we've learned. Every Enchantress, Seductress, and everything, whatever thing, any, any of those things that are obviously going to kill you after, after they seduce you, I, I go for them every single time. I, we know dang well that if we were in a fantasy world, I would be dead so early. I would be dead so early because I would fall for it every time. Because the way we're playing is like this is this is like what we would be in this in this setting, and it's like okay, scarf cannot deny a pretty face, so uh, it's constantly me doing that and us laughing at how much I get screwed over for it. It's it's funny, and it's a lot of scar and it's a lot of jinx being smart about things. <laughs> But it's, Divinity Original Sin 2 is a very fun game. It's going to be in our top 10, guaranteed, for sure. Another endorsement for that game. I really like that game. So, Destiny 2 comes out Tuesday. Wolfenstein 2 comes out Friday. And Mario Odyssey comes out Friday. Holy crap. Um, That Friday, after work, we're going to do Wolfenstein for like an hour or so. And do Mario. The idea is, Wolfenstein's ZRP that's going to be recorded for you for YouTube. And the way you do LPs is you only do a couple out episodes a day. You don't do the whole thing because if you do the whole thing, you're going to be exhausted. You're not going to you're not going to be as amped. You're not going to be as energetic later on. So slogging through it, we won't be as entertaining with Wolfenstein. So we're going to do about maybe an hour or so with Wolfenstein, and then it'll be Mario the rest of the night. Same thing will go for Saturday. It'll be probably some Destiny two, some Wolfenstein. And then Mario. And then Sunday will be the... Oh, oh, and of course, XCOM too, of course. And same thing will be Sunday. And then, of course, Monday through Friday, I'll have work. And we'll see what I do about all that as we go. But we're going to probably see daily Wolfenstein and almost daily Destiny 2 and almost daily Mario. I know I really want to play Mario, so I'm going to try to make that daily. I'm going to try to make all three daily, but it's not going to be possible. So we'll see what happens with the schedule. Because there's also Mario Rabbids, which I need to get through. Uh, Phoenix Wright will, of course, be on hold after we finish two. Uh, well, it'll be Professor Layton after Phoenix Wright. That'll be on hold for a little bit as we just get things situated. So, that's what's gonna happen. And randomly, we'll see probably Stardew Valley and maybe Path of Exile. I really like both those games, so we might randomly see streams of that. I know a lot of the viewers like Stardew Valley as well. So, yeah, you'll, you'll randomly see streams of that if I'm, if I just feel like vegging out. That'll be very hangouty. Um, uh, Before the Storm recorded that whole thing, so that'll be coming out in the future. Uh, Hat in Time, almost done recording all of that. Hat in Time is so special. That is such a pure game. Oh my god. By the way, I am very cold. Oh my god. Um, two things left to talk about. Cuphead and XCOM 2. I'm going to use a not PG word, and that is circle jerk. There's a very big circle jerk in Cuphead. It's huge. Huge. About hardcore and casuals and all this crap. How 
Cuphead's easy, or you're just not good enough. You don't deserve to see the dice boss or the devil boss. And when you buy a game, I feel like the whole game should be accessible. That's why there is a cinematic mode. That's why there is an easy mode. There's those things so that you can still experience it because you paid for the game. This isn't the arcade. In the arcade, yeah, you got to earn your way there. You got to spend them quarters, but we're at home. We're playing at home. I don't feel like someone should be punished for playing on easy for different reasons. One is maybe not very good. Maybe they're a kid. Some kids aren't good at games. I know I was good, but that doesn't mean I'm every kid. This is the, this part of it is you're not everybody. You ain't everybody. You know? Like me. Cuphead never felt hard. It, it was very fun. It was very challenging. But it never felt hard. And some of the bosses are easy. But I understand if someone's having a hard time with it. It's a run and gun game. Not especially bullet helly. It's very run and gun. There are challenges here and there. It's very Contra. It's very uh, Alien Soldier. It's very Gunstar Heroes. It's very much that kind of game. And that's not a genre you see often enough. It's a very fun genre. You just don't see it a lot. And I get if people don't really do well at that. That's perfectly fine. That is perfectly fine. This is a genre that I'm great at. This is a genre like, quite a few people are good at. It's no reason to lord it over other people, though. Like, holy crap. Like, eventually, I'm going to get every S and every P in Cuphead. I know that already. It just takes time and practice, and I'll get it. Because I know I'm good enough at this game. And I'm not going to lord that over other people at any point. It's about self-achievement with that. But there are people who did that, and they're lording it over others. Like, they're filthy casuals, or that... They're just not very good or anything like that. I, I get wanting to take pride in yourself and feeling good about something, but you don't have to tear other people down to do it. That is my feeling about it. And the other part of it is, people are just good in certain genres. And people will beat their heads against genres that they're not really good at because they like it. And that's why I say XCOM. I love XCOM. I absolutely love playing XCOM. I like it a lot. I love streaming it. I enjoy the peril of trying not to get my viewers killed. It's very fun. But I am god-awful at the game. I, I just, I'm just bad at the game. I am just bad at it. I don't know how people can do Expert Iron Man, I, or is it Commander Iron Man, whatever it's called. I don't know how people can do that. I just don't. I am so bad at this game. I am so bad. I've spent hours upon hours. Like, we're almost at 100 hours with XCOM 2. And I'm still bad at this game. I love the bits, but I suck at it. That's the humbling thing, is if you think about it, you're going to be great at a lot of things, but you're also going to be really bad at other things. you got to keep that in mind. And I feel like the circle jerk needs to keep that in mind. Like, there's no way they're amazing at Cuphead in every game, ever. And even if they are, then they're great at games. But are they great... At, I don't know. Are they great at a sport? Are they great at academics? Are they great at this? Are they great at that? We have strengths and weaknesses always. That is how it is. And it's good to take pride in our strengths. And it's, it's important to work on our weaknesses. But I hate the concept of crapping on other people. Of tearing down other people to make yourself feel better. I hate that so much. I have always hated that. I know I did it as a kid. We all do it as kids. That's a maturity level thing. But at the same time, you don't have to do that. There's a point when you should realize you're probably being an asshole. Like, not, not PG-13 there again. Like, you're probably being a bit of a douche, you know? Like, come on, is how I think about it. But leading into another topic, there's people are always arguing about something. There's always something to argue about. There's always whatever reason to argue. There is always arguing. No matter what the thing is, there's always arguing. There's always, regardless of where you are, there's arguing. And this is good. we're going to move this over to politics a little bit and more social stuff. In that, oh, going right back to games really quick. I cannot believe the people who are justifying Star Wars Battlefront 2's pay to win model. I can't believe it. They exist. I can't believe it. Holy crap. Holy crap. I can't believe it. The goalposts keep moving, I guess, because 
as new generations grow into games, they're used to having ads thrown at them. They're used to having microtransactions thrown at them. They're just used to it. To the point that they're willing to justify EA shenanigans. They want to justify uh, WB shenanigans. They're willing to justify 2K shenanigans. It's not okay. It's not okay. And it just feels like we cannot win. Those of us who actually give a damn, like we cannot win because the tide is growing. But if we don't argue about it, if we don't fight about it, then it could be even worse, maybe. That's the thing. That's the worry. But I can't just lay down and except the BS that's coming. I really can't. Because we, it's just, we don't deserve some of that bullshit. We really don't. We're, we're buying these games. We're consuming these products. And I don't want us as, as gamers to get ripped off. But a lot of gamers are okay with it. And it's unfortunate. It really is. Now moving on to politics on this. There's always arguing, and arguing drives people to different positions, to sometimes extremism and stuff like that. But, there's, there's always arguing. I, I think this is the point I'm just talking about, there's always arguing, there's infighting, there's all these things. And it's mind-blowing to me a little bit. Here's two instances. George Bush came out recently with a talk, right? And the day before that, you can guarantee a lot of people on the right, George Bush is their boy. They love George Bush. He's great and all that stuff. Maybe some of them do hate him because George Bush. George Bush. But he does this talk. It's perceived as very anti-Trump. Extremely anti-Trump. And all these people just throwing hate at George Bush. And I'm like, no freaking way. No way is this happening. Right? This is happening. This is happening. This is happening. People... Just throwing hate at Bush. It was amazing. There were people on the left going like, you know you hate Bush, but he's talking about Trump, so just kind of just sitting there and just letting it happen. It's like, I, I get that. My, my thoughts on Bush are, he meant well, he was doing some of the things that the, he's doing the political machine of the right, he's doing stuff like that. But it, it's, it is extremely heinous, some of the things he did, of course, with, with Iraq and Afghanistan. Just like, there were no weapons of mass destruction. It's very terrible. Basically lied at us. Or he went on intel incorrectly. I don't know. It's, it's so much long ago. But it's terrible how that has all snowballed into the present. But I, I, I have the belief that George Bush meant well at the end of the day. Same thing goes for Obama. He meant well with everything he's been doing and all that stuff. So people were doing things like, George Bush was silent for Obama the entire way. We'd like him to continue being silent. And he's like, you would maybe consider why he was silent the whole way through and now he's talking. Maybe consider why that. That might be worth thinking about. It might be worth thinking about how there are people on the right against Trump because holy crap, there should be. I, I feel like because the weird thing is, the right controls everything right now. You got Republican president, Republican Congress, Republican uh, judges, 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 judges. What are they called? What are they called? Judicial. Just say judicial. Executive, legislative, and judicial. They got all three right now. They got it all. They got all. They got it all. And yet they haven't gotten to do all the things they want to do. And it, it isn't all because of the Democrats. It is also because of the Republicans. There are Republicans who are preventing things from happening. And that's because they're not all okay with what is going on. So there is infighting with Republicans going on over here. You've got just... Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Not all people who follow Trump are Nazis. Not all people who follow Trump are racist. Not all of them are those things, obviously. This is something that's a problem because it's like you just you paint them all in that brush, it doesn't help anybody. They are there are people who are just will always be Republicans no matter what, which I don't agree with. I feel like you should be okay to go back and forth depending on what you actually believe in. You shouldn't just blindly follow your party. But there are people who are like that. They're they just are. It's not about Trump, it's about the Republican Party. You also have people who are well, Trump will be will Trump and the Republicans will do things in their favor, such as the tax cuts. 
they're not they're not with Trump because they're racist. They're with Trump because of other reasons for these things. So I'm not the biggest fan of painting the brush completely on everyone, but at the same time, if you truly believe in Trump, I'm just so confused because he has allowed so much BS. And the fact he is so up the A of the NFL, but there's good people on both sides when Nazis are back in America, is so freaking weird. It doesn't make any sense, and it's mind-blowing. And I just, holy crap, it's, it's very, I don't know. I just, it's really nuts. Like, just looking at it. And again, I'm still not happy with the left on things as well. Because there was, of course, uh, what it was. That ad that came out that was being that I like the way Miracle Sound put it. He was like, he thought this was like a, a Deus Ex thing where it was this this political thing. He's like, our president's under it. He's been under more attack than any president ever. And all these things. It was super dramatic and everything. Very much just trying to push extremes even further. I can't remember what it is because I, I just I already erased it from my mind because it was so stupid. But that 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 extremist ad that came out, it's been on Twitter, it's been on other things. And the thing is, the left is like, is pushing, well, here's the actual facts, here's the actual facts, here's the actual facts. And the problem is, that's not enough. It's not good enough to just state the actual facts. Because it hasn't worked. The left needs to do more than just that. It needs to maybe galvanize how important the facts are, and push it forward, and push their own narrative of, for fudge sakes! These are the facts. What is wrong with you? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to pull? What are you trying to push? Trying even harder to pull the veil. Because just stating the facts has never been good enough. Because there are people, it's very frustrating as a scientist, there are people that are on the right who, who are proud of being ignorant. As a person who believes in education, in science, and all these things, it's frustrating to see people who are okay with being ignorant. It's so frustrating. It really, really is. There was a time, like, there's always been, in America, there's always been two sides or multiple sides fighting. But our country was built on compromise. And that is disappearing right before our eyes. We just see more and more rage and hate from both sides. And there's gotta be a way to get it together. And it can't just be done softly. It has to also be done hard. You, you, can do, you can do it soft sometimes, but you also got to do it hard at times as well. That does not sound right. But it, there's got to be something more. There's got to be. Because it's not working. It's not working at all. And it's very frustrating. YouTube isn't helping. Twitter isn't helping. Sometimes... I will watch videos from, from the right side. I think I've said this before. I said on Twitter, I will watch videos on the right side. I will see things like, I'm like, all right, let's see what they think of this. Let's see what they think of all these things. I'll watch one or two. I'm like, all right, okay, there's arguments here. But then it falls apart because then they go on some like anti-feminist rant or some anti-SGW rant. I'm like, okay, you have some good points. And then you just go on this really big rant, personal attacks on people that just doesn't help the argument, doesn't help the debate anymore. And, like, I try to see these things. And then YouTube's like, hey, watch all of this alt-right stuff. I'm like, I... I'm good. I just wanted to see a little bit. And it's like, hey, let's, let's just give you a crap ton of that. And it's the whole idea of giving you more of what you watch, giving you more of what you want. And because of that, you can get very insulated. Isolated? Insulated? You can get very insular. And that's a problem. I get it, we don't want to see things we don't want to see, but at the same time, by doing this feedback loop of just giving you what you want, it does make us more ingrained in what the hell, what the hell we're into, and it's, it's both a good thing entertainment-wise, but it's a bad thing socially. And same thing goes for Twitter. Twitter does the same damn thing. What can be done is the question, right? What can actually be done? Conversation is always going to be important for that. That will always be important, but patience is also argued as nothing that's important. Because you can't, you can't beat facts down someone's throat. You can't beat your agenda down someone's throat. 
You got to talk it through. And it's really hard. And it's going to take people with way more charisma than I got, and a lot of people got, to bridge the gaps. It's going to take charisma. That's what it's really going to take. But it's, right now, what's causing the divide is people with really good fear-mongering. On, on both sides as well. That is a fact. It is a fact that there are people pushing some very extreme left agenda and people pushing very extreme right agenda. And it's just making me mad. Screw it, let's do it. I freaking hate some of the feminist movement. Like, feminism is meant to be equality of the genders. And I hate the ones that are like, men are freaking evil and just bring the women up. Instead of it being this... It's women this, men this. It's like, no, 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 no. no. It should be this. Right now, it's basically this. Right. This is the man hand, right? Yeah, men, women. Whether we like it or not, there are things that are causing this divide. It should be here. But the problem I got are feminists who want it to be this way. And that's not okay. It's the same thing for um, diversity in acting. It's basically like this, a whole lot of white, some everything else, and I want it here. There are people who want it here, I would prefer we get over here. But if you're, but you also need like historical accuracy and all this stuff, and if it's a lot of black people, it's gonna be a lot of black people, it's okay, because it's a lot of black people. Like the whole Black, the black Panther movie. Like, got a problem with all the black people here? Like, where's the white people? Like, there's a couple, but it is in freaking Africa, in Wakanda, which is primarily black, so... Here's the frustrating... I'm going everywhere. Here's the frustrating thing about Ghost in the Shell. When Scarlett Johansson got cast, and everyone was all mad about it, and people defending it, they went to Japan, and like, hey, you okay with this? You okay? They're like, well, it's an American movie, so okay, yeah, sure, why not? Because Japan makes Japan versions of everything. Those weren't the problem. It was the Asian Americans who gave a shit. It was the Asian Americans who were concerned. Because they're not seeing themselves represented in Hollywood. That's the problem. It's the problem of we're looking in the wrong places. But going back to feminism. Emma Watson. Hermione. She's a feminist. She gets attacked by other feminists because she's for this. She's not for this. It's about women being able to have a say in, about their own body. About who they are. They, it's about women get to be what they want to be. They get to be who they want to be. They get paid equal. That is the feminism I agree with. That is the feminism that is true. Because that's not just feminism. That is equality. That's what I want at the end of the day. I want equality. Not just race. Not just gender. But just straight up, everyone's treated the same. Equality. Emma Watson has always been a, a person for feminism. She does a photo shoot, very kind of risque photo shoot, and feminism attackers. Like, you shouldn't be like that. It's, it's like, slutty. It's, you're being an, an object for men. And for her, it's like, no, I'm a woman. It's my body. This is what I want to do. Like I mentioned, infighting. Infighting and feminism. And I agree with the Emma Watson one. Because it's her body. She can do whatever she wants with it. It's hers. He can do whatever she wants with it. Same with the dude. He can do whatever he wants with it. But it's so weird to see her being attacked by other feminists because they're like, you're being an object for men. She's like, it's not, what, it's not how she sees it. It's not how she sees it at all. She's being who she is. She's expressing herself like this. And that is the thing is, we all have standards and we, we got to hold ourselves to our standards, but we try to hold other people to our standards as well. But at the same time, it's not always okay to do that. I'm frustrated with that. I'm very much frustrated with the mansplaining bullshit. I really hate that. I really hate when anyone in general, if they are assumed to be a dude and they're just trying to be helpful, they are literally trying to be helpful, maybe explaining a scientific thing, whatever, and they get accused of mansplaining, I get so pissed because I'm like, it, mansplaining is a way to shut down conversation. It is a way to shut down being helpful. This might have been a fun, cathartic thing at first. You say someone's mansplaining. But now it is a way to shut down conversation. When I see someone 
straight up trying to state a fact because someone's actually being goddamn wrong. And they get slapped with mansplaining, it frustrates me to no end. And then you of course have women who are saying, no, no, don't just let me be wrong and don't correct me. I don't want that. Tell me. Tell me when I'm wrong. Like, I, it's hard to because other women are yelling at me for trying to be helpful. And this is the fact of the matter at the end of the day. We're damned if we do, damned if we don't. And it's how much we can stomach a bit, but it's also how much we want to just keep standing firm for it. I open doors for everybody. I have twice in my life been yelled at for, for, opening, for opening a window for a, a door for a woman. He's like, you think I can't open my own door? I'm like, I'm like, no, I open the door for everyone. Open it for everyone. But if that happened enough times, if that happened maybe a dozen or so times, maybe I would get miserable about opening the door because I'm just tired of getting yelled at for just trying to be a nice person. Or just opening the door for people. Maybe I would stop doing that. That's my fear. My fear is people just trying to be decent people getting shut down. Because some people have an agenda that is just not okay. Feminism is one example. Sometimes racism can be an example. Political issues can be an example as well. Where conversation, just niceness, can be killed by people just taking their frustrations out on other people. I do this vlog so I can take my frustrations out on the void. On just in general, instead of on other people. This is one of the things. The vlog is my catharsis. It is where I get out my feelings, my thoughts, what I think. I've said this a few times before. And that's what I think, everybody. This is what I think. Now, if you're on the feminist side of you think women should be above men, not equal, I... Fine. That's what you think. I think you suck, though. You know, like... Here's the thing... I gotta end this. We're going long. The thing to accept... I will love some of my viewers, I will hate some of my viewers, the people around me, the world, my family, everything. There are so many people out there, so many viewpoints, so many ideas, so many concepts, and I will know some of them. There are people I have fundamental differences with, but I still am friends with them. I still like them. It's important to have, to try to have variety. In your, in your life. It's important to have that so that you're exposed to it, so you know about it. You're not ignorant of it. You don't have to hang out with everybody of every thought and everything. Like, I, if, if, I knew, if, if I knew a viewer was a Nazi, I would not be happy about that. If I knew one of my friends was a Nazi, I would not be happy about that. If a relative was a Nazi, I would not be happy about it. Considering my family died some of my family have died and fought in World War II, for damn sure I'd not be happy about it. People are people at the end of the day. At the same time, maybe that's a little too optimistic. There are evil people out there. I don't know. That's enough thinking and talking for now. That definitely is. Wherever you are on anything, any political thing, any of that, any of these and those things, you are who you are, I guess. But sometimes it is important to check yourself and where you are. And am I the a-hole, or am I doing the right thing? Because I know in times in the past, I was the a-hole. And times in the future, I will be the a-hole. But it's important to check myself and see about that. And evolve. Never stop evolving, never stop adapting. That's what's important. I don't know how to end this. So, let's just end it. I had fun talking, hope you have fun watching and listening. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun. I hope y'all had enjoy your, your day, your week, everything. At the end of the day, you know, whether you agree or disagree, I want everyone to have fun. It's important to me that people have fun. That people have a good day. If there's just so much darkness, I'd rather we all have a lot more. Thanks for coming by, everybody. See you next time.